In this video, I'm going to cover how to get Intellivision games up and running on the PS2 version of RetroArch. Intellivision is a great system to emulate on the PS2 version of RetroArch. Very low spec, runs well, and just works really well with the free Intellivision core. That being said, there are a few extra steps to get it up and running, including a couple of BIOS files. So let's just go ahead and jump in. So the first step to getting in television games up and running on your PS2 version of RetroArch is to install the PS2 version of RetroArch to a USB thumb drive and get it up and running on your PS2. I have a video on how to do that, that was the first video of the PS2 series, so be sure to check that out first. And also make sure you run RetroArch at least once before continuing on with this video. A couple folders need to be made, so just makes it nice and easy. Once you have RetroArch up and running on your PS2, pull the USB drive out of the PS2 and put it into your computer. Next, we need to source some Intellivision games, and there are quite a few ways of getting these. There are Intellivision collections on PSP, PS2, GameCube, Xbox, PC, and you could just rip the ROM straight from those if you have the appropriate tools. Then there's also, like, the flashback collection systems that I believe you could dump ROMs from. Alternatively, you can resort to the shady parts of the net and grab them that way. I really don't care how you get in television games, but don't ask for download links as none will be provided as that is illegal. Stop it! But once the games are sourced, all we need to do is put them onto the USB drive we use on the PS2. I made a folder in a previous tutorial named RetroArch ROMs, and that's just where I like to put all of my games that I'm going to use in RetroArch, so I'm just going to drop my television games right in there. Next, we need the exec.bin and grom.bin BIOS files. If you own any of those in television collections, especially the one on PC, these are included in there. The PC version just has them as straight files. It's really easy to grab them. The console versions require a little bit of extra work to decrypt files, but you can get them from those as well. But once you have them, they should already be named properly as well. But grom.bin, exec.bin but they need to go into our RetroArch system folder, and if you followed my install video, you'll have a RetroArch folder, and inside that, another RetroArch folder, and then we have our system folder. And we're just going to drag our grom and exec.bin files right on in. Once you have these files placed, we can go ahead and close out of everything on the computer, take the USB drive out, and put it back into our PS2. Now, once again, this is a continuation of my PS2 RetroArch install video, so please refer back to that video for how to get RetroArch up and running on your PS2, as well as making a nice little RetroArch entry here for your free MC boot, free HD boot menu. But anyways, let's boot into RetroArch. And once RetroArch is loaded up, we are free to begin loading up our Intellivision content. So we can do this by going down to load content, scrolling down to mass, this is our USB thumb drive, Navigating to the Intellivision games directory that we have made previously and then selecting a game and loading it up I personally don't prefer this method So what I like to do instead is make a playlist so on the main menu There is a playlist tab and I'm gonna click on import content manual scan content directory and I'm gonna navigate back to that Intellivision games folder And I'm gonna tell it to scan this directory System name, you're going to use the content directory, so make sure you name that folder something you want to have it display as on the playlist. Default core, we're going to go down to Mattel. Intellivision, free Intellivision. Scan recursively is set to on by default. Make sure it is still on if you have your game separated into subfolders. And then make sure your games are unzipped for the PS2 version of RetroArch. Just, makes se just seems to make things run a little bit better. But once these options are set, go ahead and start the scan. And once the scan is completed, we are now going to have an Intellivision Games entry here. And then to play a game, all we need to do is go into the playlist, select a game, and tell it to run. And there we go, Intellivision Games up and running on the PS2 version of RetroArch. Frickin' sweet. Now, to play Intellivision Games, there are a few things to note. Pressing L1 or R1 will bring up our virtual keypad, so for those of you that were into Intellivision, you know that the controller had a 9 keypad on it, so this is how you would access that. You hold down L1 or R1, then you can use the D-pad to navigate it, and select a button. Pressing the start button on your PS2 controller will pause the emulation and let you bring up a help screen by pressing circle. And from here, if you press circle, that is your A button, so that is your right action button. Cross is our B button, so left action button. 
And then square is our Y button, so top action button. And then triangle is the last selected keypad button. So for example, if there's a game that needs to press the number three key a bunch, you use L1 and R1 to select it, and then from there on you can just press triangle and that'll always be your three key. Very convenient. And the last control to note is the select button. This will swap your controller between the right and left side. Now, most games run from either the right or left side, I don't remember, but if you get into a game and you can't get it to start, just press select and it will change the controller over to the right or left, so that way you can actually play the games. And then, as far as aspect ratio, it looks like Intellivision is actually correct when you have your PS2 set to a 4x3 aspect ratio, so there we go. Much better. But to start playing Intellivision games, all you need to do is press uh, circle for most of them. And then some games will ask you to select players, so all you need to do is bring up your keypad, press circle to select a number, and then press enter. And there we go. And then we could just use our D-pad to start playing games and any of the buttons that we need. So for those of you looking to get Intellivision games up and running on your PS2 versions of Retroarch, that's really all there is to it. Not much involved for this one, which is pretty nice and convenient, all things considered. And there aren't even any advanced core options to speak of, so once you have everything set up initially, you are really good to go. But that's going to do it as far as Intellivision emulation is concerned. As always, if you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comments section below, and I'll do my best to try to help you out. But now if you could all do me a huge favor, please be sure to hit that like or dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. And if you haven't done so already, hit that sub button so you can see when new videos like this or reviews or other random nonsense I post goes live. Goes a long way to helping out the channel and keep it growing, and we're just super close to hitting our goals thanks to all of you. Like, thank you so very much. If you'd like to support the channel further, you could also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little really goes a long way to keeping the place up and running, and we are super grateful to everyone who has done so. It just helps out so much. Thank you to all of our champions. Y'all are friggin' rock stars. But that's gonna do it for this one, so until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, stay awesome, and we will see you all back next video.